Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from beautiful Costa Rica. This evening's topic is going to be positive and negative supply. Think about that for a minute. If you like the content, please subscribe. So guys, I'm going to jump right into it. First of all, we're, go we're going to identify what supply is. And for this analogy, let's suppose you're going camping and it's you and a couple people, whomever, and you are bringing a big jug of water. That is your supply of water. And say you're camping for three days, and when that water runs out, you don't have any more water. So that is your liquid supply for the camping trip. Now we're gonna take that analogy and use it with the narcissist. You are the water jug. The only difference is the duration of your narcissistic relationship is how long you will basically be in the relationship, meaning your supply is running low each and every day, and or it was running low each and every day when you were in the narcissistic relationship just like that water jug, it eventually it runs out. And it's nothing on you. It's not like you, you're, st you're, you're, you're yourself. The thing is, you're, you were being depleted throughout the relationship of your resources, of your energy, of your love, your empathy, your looks, your social, social circle, your financial resources, so many other ways. And you didn't realize it at the time because you were most likely in the fog. Or maybe you figured it out towards the end of the relationship and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. This is, this is un, I, I can't believe this. So having said all that, the narcissist relies, just like when you were camping, you need that water to survive for the, day, the camping trip. The narcissist relies on supply, which is provided by you. Now the narcissist will take any kind of supply. For this video, we're gonna discuss positive and negative supply, both which fuel the narcissist. Now again, before you knew that you were in a narcissistic relationship or that narcissism existed here on the planet, you had no reason to, to understand the, that what supply is and, and why it would, what, what, what the purpose of supply is other than that camping trip or things like that. But now we're, we're getting the education, we're becoming empowered, enlightened, certainly awakened and definitely aware. We know that the narcissist needs supply. They need multiple sources of supply to regulate themselves each and every day. But for you right now, on the channel, and again, thank you very much for being here. Each and every time that you would be interacting with the narcissist, or you do, let's say it's the workplace, wherever you are, or when, wherever you were with the narcissist, when you were giving them accolades, like, wow, you're so beautiful, you're amazing, you're, you're, you're the best, you're so smart, I love the way you look, absolutely, I'm, I'm so blessed to be with you, things like that, you're giving them supply. Now, to a, a healthier individual, they may say, well, Andrew, those are just compliments. What's the big deal? You're right. That's exactly how I look at them, as compliments. And a compliment should be administered, given to somebody when you actually believe it. You look great today. Your hair looks amazing, things like that. But you don't just dish them out all the time. You, you, they should be saved or reserved for special occasions, like when you actually believe. Someone did a great job, they look good today. Or they got an A on that test, fantastic. Things like that. The narcissist doesn't look at it this way. The narcissist, remember, lives in their own bubble and they believe that they're better than you, that they have better just about everything than you, including intelligence. And they also believe that they are, de are deserving of your praise, of you giving them the positive supply. Like I just mentioned, wow, you look so great today. It's amazing, wow, you drive so well. I can't believe how you did that, you're incredible. All of these things to pump up the fragile ego, ego of the narcissist, that's what you were doing in the relationship because if it was a romantic relationship, you most likely were in love. And that's what healthy people do. They wanna pump each other up, working towards the same goal, headed in the same direction, have the same dreams and aspirations and, and goals. That's what you want to do if you were in a rom romantic relationship. Same thing in the business. If, you, if, you're, if you're part of the team and your, your, your goal is to accomplish something, and let's say this quarter, you've gotta sell X number of whatever you're selling or get more customers to your website, whatever, that's what you're doing. You're working towards a goal and you're gonna accommodate and most likely and help the people on the team to reach that goal. But there, these are healthier relationships and healthier ways. But the narcissist, again, they're not looking for any goal that involved you or any goal that involved anybody. What they want is to take, take, take. Have you continue to be on that hamster wheel of letting them know just exactly how great they are, how incredible they are, how beautiful they are, how handsome they are. The list goes on and on. That's what they want. That's a short definition of positive supply. Now, negative supply, it's, this is the question I'm gonna, I'm gonna propose to you guys in a moment. But negative supply is, is like, let's say the narcissist comes home and there's an argument 
or the narcissist in the bad mood and they're, they're gaslighting you or stonewalling you or invalidating you, whatever things that at the time you did not even know these terms existed and now you do because you're getting the education and fantastic work, I'm very proud of you. But when, when you were being gaslit and stonewalled and invalidated and things like this on and on, the narcissist was loving this, why? Because they were affecting your mood, they were affecting your behavior. You see, you weren't the beautiful, bright, shining person that you actually are because you were, your, your head was in the fog, you were, you were spinning around like, I'm being treated so improperly, I don't understand this. Who is this person? Who does this? Like, who just blows up because I ordered pepperoni pizza and it was supposed to be mushrooms? An example, things like that. But the narcissist loves this and they love to watch your reaction each and every time you're with them because remember, they are playing you. They're manipulating you the whole time. In both cases, with the positive or the negative supply that you were offering. What they want to do is, is maintain their sense of false self like they are the most important person in the room. That's exactly what they want to do. Whatever room they're in, no matter who they're with, they are constantly comparing themselves, looking for other sources of supply who will buy into their falseness and their false beliefs of themselves, of grandiosity, of I'm better than you and all that. And the whole time they're doing this, remember guys, the narcissist is wearing the mask. They're trying their best to get multiple sources of supply to give them, positive or negative, it doesn't matter. Notice how the narcissist many times has a few people that they just, they're, they're complaining about or they're, you know, the narcissist is the victim and person A or person B just, they're being so difficult. It's never the narcissist saying, yes, uh, I mean, I, I'm being difficult. I, I should really slow down. It's not nice. No, they're always projecting and blaming other people. The narcissist is not accountable for their actions, their behaviors, anything. Remember, the narcissist reframes each and every experience of each and every day the way they want to see it. That's why gaslighting is one of their most, one of their tools that you, they use the most. Having said all these things, the narcissist, they want and they need and they crave supply, whether it's positive or negative, they need it. And this validates them. This makes them feel that they're superior to you, that they, that they matter on this planet, that everything that they're telling their false sense of self is actually validated. Because let's say, no matter which one of those sources of supply it is positive or negative, they're having an effect on you. And you as a healthier individual, what you're thinking is, wow, like this person I continually, am, are, are they're confronting me or they're, you know, after I, after I encounter them, uh, it's just so draining. I, I, I don't like, I just don't feel myself. All these things are because the narcissist is stealing from you. They're stealing your energy, your light, your love, your soul, your beauty, your confidence, definitely your time. That's why many times post-narcissistic relationship virtually every time I would say, you, you need to, to, to exhale and it takes a, a long time to recover from this. The reason why is because you are finding your identity again. You're actually believing in yourself again. The more you are, the, the longer you are away from the narcissist, the stronger you get and you become galvanized and you be, your, your head is out of the fog and you're like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I was in that relationship. Was that a dream? I, like, I don't get it. That was the most unusual thing and I was doing, saying and acting ways I never thought I would ever in a million years. But yet you did because you were mesmerized by the narcissistic relationship. That's how they do it. That's exactly how they do it. They're gonna trip, sorry, trick, trap and manipulate people that are unsuspecting, that don't have the education or awareness about narcissism each and every day. And they will continue to do this. That's why again, if you were discarded when you were discarded or if you ended the relationship, that's why the narcissist just disappeared most times because they already had multiple sources of supply lined up in the background. Sources you didn't even know about. And yes, they were negative or positive or many other ways. The thing is the narcissist is, they're insidious. They're always doing multiple things behind your back, keeping secrets, keeping little bubbles of people around them that maybe you hear about but you've never met, triangulating. All these things we discussed in the channel are the characteristics of the narcissist. They won't change until the aging narcissist comes to light. And then the games are pretty much, pretty much over for the most part. They're not, but th they can't manipulate in the ways they used to manipulate when they were younger. But getting back on track, the negative or, and positive sources of supply, these could be anything. Like if the narcissist brings home a new puppy, let, let, we discussed this on the channel months ago. Well, what is that? That's positive supply because for you, a, a non-narcissist, if you bring home a puppy, it's because you, you want a, an addition to the family and it's beautiful and it's gonna give a whole new energy to the house and it's fun and they're beautiful and they're, they're always happy to see you. 
That's how you see a puppy. Maybe the narcissist doesn't quite see it that way. Maybe the narcissist sees the puppy as a way to get attention or supply from anybody when they're walking down the street, from relatives, family members, whomever. Pay attention to that one. This happens more than you would think. And then when the narcissist gets tired or jaded of the puppy, say the puppy grew up to be a dog, is it as cute anymore? To you, yes, because you adopted the puppy, you brought it to your family, and that's the whole idea, family. But the narcissist may not see it that way. They may see it, okay, this puppy's kind of grown, don't really want to spend time with it anymore, not that I ever did, but I can't really get the supply I used to get from the puppy, and maybe they give it away, or who knows what they do. I'm just giving you another example. And the negative supply is, again, let's say you come home from work and you had a great day. You just got a, a promotion or a raise or something really great happened. And you want to share it with the narcissist and you're so excited. You open the front door and you, you, hey, keep in mind you don't know it's a narcissist, that they are a narcissist. And you're like, hey, I want to share this with you. This is great news. Check this out. And they're like, in a minute, please. Like, I'm on a phone call. Like, just can't wait. Just, you know. And they immediately deflate you. They immediately burst your bubble and they immediately put you way down below them because whatever call they're on, they should be able to sense that, wow, he or she or they are really happy to be home and see me, this is great. And a healthy individual would be like, what is it? Tell me, Can, let's talk about it, what is it? I can't wait. But no, no, the narcissist sees you happy and they, they must diminish you. They must demean you, invalidate you, and just make you feel less than. That's what the narcissist does and that would be negative supply. That's just one example of, of, of how they, would, they crush people. But guys, this video could go on for hours and hours, actually days, if we wanted to. I'm just giving you an example. Every time you give the narcissist a reaction, and remember, we don't react, we always respond. We stay within ourselves, we're calm, we're cool, we're collected, we're stoic, and we give proper answers. This is with everybody on the planet now. No longer are we jumping around trying to satisfy others. We are no longer people pleasers. We are doing what makes us happy. That's what we do. But every time you give the narcissist, or gave, let's say in the past, you gave the narcissist a reaction, which is most likely what you did, you were giving them fuel, you were giving them supply, you were giving them power and control, and you were making them feel so good, one video can't even explain it. Again, you didn't realize what you were doing because you didn't have the education on narcissism. Now you do, you're getting it from my channel and many others. That's why we go no contact, block, delete, remove flying monkeys, and anyone associated with the narcissist. That's what we do because there's no reason to be giving someone else your resources. It just doesn't work that way. Our time, our energy, our love, our empathy is now spent on ourselves and those people that value us and that we believe in. That's what we do. So guys, I hope you liked the video. I loved doing it from beautiful Costa Rica. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great evening. I will talk to you later on. Stay blessed, stay true, stay on the path. Continue to move forward each and every day. You are absolutely amazing. I love you all. God bless you. Stay strong and know that you are doing the absolute number one best thing for yourself each and every day by becoming educated and awakened. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.